Hi, my name is Callie from Mythical Tight Scenes. This is a video that is a tutorial for how to lay out a mini zine in Canva. So this is not a tutorial about how to use Canva in general. If you haven't used Canva before, there's a lot of great tutorials and resources online. Um, if you've never heard of Canva before, it is graphic design software that's available in a web browser and also as mobile apps. Uh, in a web browser, you just go to canva.com to get to it. If you have not created an account before, you just walk through the steps to create a free account. Everything that I'm showing you today can be done on the free account. Just for your reference, there is a Canva Pro, which is the paid version, and anything that you see in Canva that has this little crown symbol next to it means it's part of the paid version. So there are some templates and graphic design elements and advanced features that are on the paid plan. So that's what the that little crown means when you see it. After you create your account or after you log in, this is the first page you see. This is the home page. And from here, we're going to create a new design. So you click up here to create a design. You can search for formats in here. So I'm in the US and standard paper is 8.5 by 11. So I could search for flyer and find this landscape 11 by 8.5 inches. But if you're printing on different size paper, you can try searching for other documents or just enter a custom size. So I'm going to click down here on custom size and in this window I'm going to change this to inches but if you measure in centimeters that's here as well. But I'll go to inches and I want it to be 11 inches wide by 8.5 inches high and then click create new design. This opens a new window and then it's just a blank page with your design. Uh, you can name it whatever you want up here where it says Untitled Design. So I'm just going to name this Sample Zine, but you could title it whatever for your file name. Um, depending on how you use Canva when you open a new design, you may or may not see these dotted lines around the edges. That's the print bleed area, so when you're printing out on most printers, they cannot print right to the edge of the paper, so that just gives you a visual for where the edge of the paper is where you don't want to have any important information right there. But if you find that distracting while you work, you can turn it off by going to view settings and show print bleed, and then it'll turn that off. I like seeing it just so I know not to put anything important that close to the edge. It's a good reminder. So that is what those dotted lines mean. I'm going to minimize this side area here so you can see this a little bigger. So to make a mini zine, this is if you imagine the paper was unfolded. So I want to make eight panels on here so that I can see where those dividing lines would be when I'm working on the zine in Canva. So those are called guides. They're going to be guidelines on the page. So to create them, go to File, View Settings, Add Guides then we're going to click on custom. So what I want it to be is four columns across and then divide the top and half, the top and bottom in half. So I'm going to change this columns to four. For this gap, this refers to this gap in between the columns here. I leave it at whatever the default is, 0.18, and I know that I do have some wiggle room in there, but if you find measurements that work better for you, you can feel free to change that and it'll change these column gaps. And then um, I'm going to say two rows here so it divides top and bottom. And you can see that dividing line goes there. I don't need a gap for that. I just kind of know how close I can get to that line and I don't need to adjust margins. So then you can click on add guides and you see this guides added and locked. When a guide is locked, that means you can't move it by clicking on it and trying to drag it, which is nice because if you're working on a text box or an image and you want to click and drag it and it's close to a guideline, if the guides were unlocked, it would be um, you might be moving the guide instead of the element. So when they're locked, that means I can't move these by accident. If you do need to unlock them for any reason, you can go to view settings and click here for lock guides and it, when the check mark goes away they will be unlocked. So that gives you your eight pages for your mini zine. The way that I lay mine out, the bottom left corner is the back cover of the zine. This is the front cover. This is page one, page two. Page three will flip upside down. 
page four, page five, and page six. So I can label those for you so that you can see and follow along. So I clicked text here and then this panel shows up for adding text. So I'll type front cover here. If you haven't used Canva before, it's very easy. Most of it is intuitive and just click and drag, copy and paste. All those shortcuts work pretty standard to other programs you might be used to. So this, the far left, is the back cover. And then I'll copy this. This is going to be page one. Page two. Oh, I'm sorry, two. Page three is going to be up here, but it flips upside down. So I still like working with text right side up, and then I will rotate it to go upside down here. So if you click on this button here that looks like two arrows, click and drag. And um, it's nice that these degrees come up because you know exactly when you're Rotate it around to 180 would be exactly upside down from page two. And the reason that this has to flip upside down is because when you fold the scene, you'll fold along this line. So four pages are oriented this way. And then these four pages, when it's folded, uh, will be right side up. But when you're designing it flat, it needs to be upside down for it to be oriented correctly when you fold it. So then, this page becomes page four. Oh, this is why I like doing it uh, right side up because it messes me up when I try and rotate and figure out how I move the, course, the cursor. But there's page four. I just copy and paste to make another box over here. That's five. And then this will be six. So if you need guides, even text boxes to kind of tell you where you are, feel free to add text boxes. I've made a lot of zines this way, so I, I just know the layout as I'm working. But I will show you a finished zine so you can see what it looks like when it's in this kind of layout. So this is one of my zines called Playground Games in the 1990s. So if you remember back here, this is back cover, front cover. So here's my back cover. I usually just say thank you and then I have links to my work. And then here's the front cover, page one, page two, page three flips upside down. And then the, this top row is upside down relative to this row. So page three, page four, five, and six. Um, I remove the guides so that you can see this a little cleaner, but if you look at the guides here, um, I had done lines like this because this was before Canva added those options to make your custom columns. So I was doing this manually and figuring out where the lines go. And then I also added this line here so that I could figure out where the middle of this panel was. And I added this guide here to figure out the middle of this row. So if you want to add additional guides, you do that by going to File, View settings, make sure that show rulers and guides has a check mark next to it. That means you can see the ruler up here across the top and the ruler down here along the side. Then to add additional guides, you click in the ruler and drag down. So if you want a horizontal guide, you click up here in the ruler and drag down and this purple line appears. And when it turns pink, it's showing you it's locking onto something within your design to align elements. But you can drag it anywhere you need it. If you put a guide down and you don't like it and you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is click on it and drag it off the page and it'll go away. Um, same idea to make a vertical line. You go to the vertical ruler, click in the ruler and drag across, and your guide is there. You can let go to set it wherever you need it. And if you want to move it, you could just click and move it again. So that's helpful if you like working with guides to figure out how to align different parts of the page. And again, if you do not want this guide anymore, you just drag it off the page, let go of the mouse, and it disappears. So that's the way I lay out zines in Canva. 
That way I can have a mini zine that I made on the computer. I mix digital elements with handwritten things. So like these little illustrations I did all by hand and then scan them in to add them into Canva. When your design is finished and you want to save it as a PDF, you click on the share button in the top corner here and then go down to download. And then for file type, choose PDF print. There's also PDF standard. So the difference is PDF print is a higher quality file, 300 DPI so that it prints at a good quality for a physical copy. PDF standard is good if you want to do a downloadable file, like a digital zine that's not necessarily going to be printed, or if you want to share it with people because this is a smaller file, so it's gonna be a smaller file size. But for printing it, choose PDF print. I ignore these options for mini zines. They don't really matter for those zines that I make, but you might find them helpful. For color profile on the free version of Canva, you can only choose RGB, which is usually for digital use. CMYK is usually what people use for printing, but you see this little crown here, that means it's part of the paid plan only. Honestly, for zines, RGB is probably fine. It would really only matter if you're very particular about colors, but especially if you're printing black and white, RGB is totally fine. Then you would click the download button and this will download as a PDF file to your computer. And then from there, you can print it at home or at the print shop, wherever you print your zines. I always like to print a test copy before I print a bunch of copies to make sure that everything lines up the way I want it to. So if you were to print this out and then see that you need to move text over or move images so that they look better on the page, you can make those changes and then just click share and download again and download a new PDF. So that's how I do mini zines in Canva. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.